Today is going to be section 821, and we're going to be writing equations using complex roots. So we're going to define what a complex number is. We're going to understand how complex roots exist in a polynomial, and then we're going to write a polynomial using these complex roots. Now, let's take a look at these scenarios. Now, I graphed them for you, and if I graph this right here and I asked for you, you know, what are the solutions or what are the, the roots or the zeros, you would tell me that it crosses at 0 and 4, and so those would be my zeros. Those would be my roots. Well, what if I graphed this one? It crosses at 2, and so you tell me, well, uh, your roots are 2. But this graph right here, if you notice, it's not crossing the x-axis at all. But it does have solutions. It does have roots. And so what we're actually going to do is we know the roots in this scenario. We know the roots in this scenario. What we're going to do is we're going to examine the roots in this scenario. So if you remember when we solved quadratic equations, you know sometimes we got i as one of our answers. Well, typically, all those times that we got that, we would write it in the form a plus bi. Now, a number in that form, we're going to call that a complex number. And so for us, as we're going through polynomials, we're going to be in this realm of complex numbers. Now, we would say that this value a is our real part, and this bi is the imaginary part. Now please note that a and b could be 0. So for example, if b is 0 and I said a is 1, 1 plus 0i, well, 1, that's a complex number. That's OK. So we've actually technically been dealing with complex numbers since day one, you know, with solving some of these equations. It's just pure imaginary numbers where your a is 0, so like 4i we haven't really dealt so much with that. Now with these complex numbers you can add them together, subtract them, multiply and divide them all like normal. And so let's see if we can do this. Let's add these together. So 2 plus i plus 2 minus i. Now when we're adding these together just combine like terms. 2 plus 2 is 4 i minus i, well that cancels out and so I have just have 4. Now when we multiply 2 plus i times 2 minus i, 2 times 2 is 4, negative 2i, positive 2i, and minus i squared, well we know that i squared is negative 1, so minus negative 1, 2i negative 2i and positive 2i do cancel out so you get 4 minus negative 1 which is the same as 5. Let's look at one more. If I add these together 3 plus 3 is 6 negative 5i plus 5i those would cancel out but now multiplying three times three is nine 15i, negative 15i, and minus 25i squared. So those do cancel out. 9 minus 25, and then i squared is negative 1. So 9 plus 25, that gives me 34. Now if we noticed, there should be a pattern that you're looking at. You're like, huh, because the i's kind of disappeared when we added them and multiplied. Now the reason why that happened is because the relationship of these two values. Notice how this value is the same, this value is the same, the difference is ones plus ones minus, right? The same, the same, ones plus or minus. We call these conjugates and conjugates they're gonna have this relationship when we add and multiply to where the i's are going to disappear. Now, we're going to take this idea of conjugates and set it off to the side. We're going to come back to it. 
So we're going to look at the roots of a polynomial in terms of complex numbers. So if you remember from the previous lesson, we know that the root or the solution or the x-intercept, we can create a quadratic equation from it. And so whatever the roots are, you can create a polynomial by writing the form like x minus your root or x minus your zero. Same idea. So if I saw that it crossed at 5 and negative 4, I could say x minus 5 and x minus negative 4. And then from there, you can go through and you can multiply it through to create your polynomial. If you had roots and your complex values, like there are complex numbers here, right? i, imaginary, well, you can do the same thing. x minus your first imaginary value, x minus the second imaginary value. You'd have to distribute the negative, but then you would go through and you would distribute everything through. And we're going to look at a couple of examples here momentarily. Now, with those conjugates that I just mentioned, okay, every single non-real zero, so that has an imaginary value, will never exist just by itself. They always come in conjugate pairs. So if I have 3 minus 5i, I have to assume, or I can assume, that 3 plus 5i also exists. It just does exist. No ifs, ands, ors, or buts. Now this isn't just with imaginary, it's also with irrational, so like square root of 5, if I had 3 minus square root of 5, I also have 3 plus square root of 5. So just know that these imaginary values, the a plus bi, they don't exist by itself. Like you're going to have the, you're always going to have two values, and they're going to, the relationship between those two values are going to be these conjugate pairs. So let's create a polynomial with these roots. So the first one to create the polynomial, it's going to be x minus my 0, x minus my 0. OK, that's the hard part. Now it's the tedious part. I can distribute that negative through. So I get x minus 1 minus i. And then here, distribute that negative, I get x minus 1 plus i. So now we have to be very careful, but we have to distribute these together. So x times x, you get x squared. x times negative 1, you get negative x. x times i, you get xi. So now moving on. So negative 1 times x is negative x. Notice how I'm lining them up, makes it a little easier. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times i is negative i. Now I'll change the color just so we can see it a little easier. And I'll make it a different one. So negative i times x, that's negative xi. Negative i times negative 1, that's going to be plus i. And then negative i times ne uh, positive i, so that's going to give me minus i squared. Now, when you do this, if you did it right, you're going to notice any value with an i is going to cancel out. So positive xi, negative xi cancel out. Negative i and positive i cancel out. And then the last piece, i squared, is negative 1. And so now I can combine like terms. So I have x squared here is minus 2x, and then plus 1, and then that's going to end up being a plus 1 because negative negative is a positive, so I get plus 2. So this right here, this is a polynomial that represents those zeros. Now, I don't have an extra point on the graph for me to plug in to find a, so we're done. Like There's nothing else that I can do. Now for this next one, example number 2, I only have one complex root here. I only have this one imaginary root, a plus bi. So I have to assume that 4 plus 2i, its conjugate, also exists. 
So now we write it out. X minus your zero. X minus your zero. So I distribute the negative, so I get x minus 4 plus 2i, and then x minus 4 minus 2i. And same idea, you go through and you multiply those together to be able to create your polynomial. Now remember the hint, your i's should be canceling out. All right, so I want you guys to kind of practice this. Go ahead and uh, take a moment and see if we can create a polynomial with these roots. All right, so I kind of tricked you here. If you look at this first one, you probably set things up. You probably wrote, oh, I have the conjugate 2i plus 1. That's actually wrong. That is not the conjugate. If you remember, we said it has to be in the form a plus bi. That is not in the form a plus bi. That is in the form of bi plus a. You have to switch them. I have to rewrite this as negative 1 plus 2i. Now my conjugate is going to be negative 1 minus 2i. And so you can set this up x minus your 0, x minus your 0, and then there you have your answer. Now for this next one here, I have three roots. So I also have to assume that 4 plus 2i also exists. So I can write out my polynomial x minus 5, x minus your 0, x minus your 0. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned how to create polynomial functions in the complex realm, which means we could have imaginary values. And so what is a complex root? That could be any value in the form a plus bi. There could be only a real part. There could only be an imaginary part. But we need to understand that all polynomials, there could be imaginary values in there. Do complex roots come in conjugate pairs? Yes. If you have a plus bi, you can assume that there's an a minus bi. And it has to be in that form, a plus bi or a minus bi already, for you to be able to assume the other, right? Like I kind of tricked you in that previous one. You need to make sure that it's in the form a plus bi.